Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's Special Edition. My name is Camel, and today we have a guide for the wackiest weapon in Skyrim and perhaps all of the Elder Scrolls lore. The unique staff, the Daedric Artifact, the Wabajack. Before we get into it, be sure to at some point hit up my social medias, links to them can be found down in the description. Down there is also a timestamp that will take you directly to the overview of the Wabajack. In case, of course, you wish to skip the acquisition of the weapon. And I am aware, even now, before editing this video, that this is going to be an exceptionally long guide. So feel free to use the timestamp in the description, but be sure to stick around because, oh my god, this thing is seriously off chops. With plenty of unique features, plenty of glitches, and plenty of bugs. Now the Wabajack is the biggest gamble in game. From turning enemies into sweet rolls, all the way to breaking your game. The Wabajack hides many secrets, which we will discuss later on in the video. But for now, let's begin our journey. Firstly, we'll need to make our way to the capital city of Skyrim, Solitude. On the map, as we all know, it can be found up on the northern edge of Skyrim. Once here, we'll want to wander the streets until we run into this man, Dervenin. When you do, speak to him. You... you help me. You help people, right? That's what you do. What do you need? My master has abandoned me. Abandoned his people. And nothing I say can change his mind. Now he refuses to even see me. He says I interrupt his vacation. It's been so many years. Won't you please help? Why don't you leave your master? Oh, you just don't understand. Without him, I am not free. Without him, I am doomed. All of his empire shall fall into chaos. All right, how can I find you, master? Last I saw him, he was visiting a friend in the Blue Palace. But no one as mundane as a Yarrow. No, no, such people are below him. No, he went into the forbidden wing of the palace to speak with an old friend. Said it had been ages since they had last had tea. Oh, and you'll need the hip bone. It's very important. No entering Pelagius's wing without that. Why do you need him back? Without his guidance, our homeland is falling apart. North wages war against South. The Holy Flame flickers and dies. We need his return. Oh, but I'm sure he'll repay you when he comes to his senses. His favor is a powerful, powerful thing. And so very worth any inconveniences. How can I get to you, Master? He stays in the Pelagius wing of the Blue Palace. The doors are locked, and only Falk Firebeard can grant entry. But I hear the maids, Una and Erdi, know how to enter it for cleaning. Surely they could help for such an important matter. Who is your master? He is a great man, but one rarely praised. He rules twin empires that span the length and breadth of our minds. All know him, but few can name him. But he has forbidden me from saying his name. He says it distracts him, and woe to those who draw his ire. But you will know him when you see him. He's the one who made me like this. Alright, so now we'll have some interesting information from Dervenin. And we will also now have a quest called the Mind of Madness. Now we'll need to make our way to the Blue Palace, which is also found within Solitude. Once inside, hunt down the two maids, Odie and Una. If your speech skill is too low, you won't have the speech option to get the key off of them, nor can you pickpocket it from them. And this happened to me, but what I did was, I went back with a speech skill of 30, and it worked. Yes? I need the key into the Plagueis wing. Oh, I'd get in trouble for that. It's not allowed. Besides, it's scary in there. Look, Falk asked me to check it out. Totally lying. Well, I suppose in that case it's okay to let you in. But only briefly. Be careful and come right back. All right then. Now, if you have finished the Wolf Skull Cave quest for Falk, he would just give you the key when asked. So now we have the key. Let's make our way to the Pelagius wing that can be found in the Blue Palace. It will be marked with a quest marker, but in case you can't find it, it's here on the map. Found in the southwestern corner of the Blue Palace. Make your way inside. Have a wander around and eventually this will happen. Boom. Teleported. Marty, Pelly, my dear. Oh, I couldn't. It goes right through me. Besides, I have so many things to do. So many undesirables to contend with. Naysayers, buffoons, detractors. Why, my, my headsman hasn't slept in three days. You are far too hard on yourself, my dear, sweet, homicidally insane Pelagius. 
What would the people do without you? Dance, sing, smile, <laughs> grow old. You are the best septum that's ever ruled. Well, except for that Martin fella. But he turned into a dragon god, and that's hardly sporting. You know, I was there for that whole sordid affair. Marvelous time! Butterflies, blood, a fox, a severed head, ho ho ho, and the cheese! To die for. Yes, yes, as you've said countless times before. Had a rumph. Well, then, if you're going to be like that, perhaps it's best I take my leave. A good day to you, sir. I said good day! Yes, yes, go. Leave me to my ceaseless responsibilities and burdens. Okay, so now we're in this weird area. Let's go up and speak to none other than this brilliant looking man. How rude! Can't be bothered to host an old friend for a decade or two. Who were you talking to? Pelagius the Third. Now, surely even you know about Pelagius' decree. On his deathbed, oh, and this was inspired, he forbade death! That's right! Death! Outlawed! Wait, where are we? Inside the mind of Pelagius, silly. Oh, is it your first time? I'm here to deliver a message. Really? Oh, oh, what kind of message? A song! A summons! Wait, uh, I know! A death threat. Written on the back of an Argonian concubine. Ah, those are my favorites. Well, spit it out, mortal. I haven't got an eternity. Actually, I do. Little joke. But seriously, what's the message? Look, I think I made a mistake coming in here. Oh, no, 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 no. No mistake at all. What you made was a choice. Granted, not a very wise choice, but these things happened. <laughs> oh, the folly of youth. You know, you remind me of myself at a young age. All I cared about was riding narwhals and sleeping in honeycombs and drinking baby's tears. Word of advice. If you ride a narwhal, mind the pointy end. Ah, but there I go. Waxing poetic about me misspent youth. Now... Where were we? Oh, yes, you're the mortal messenger. And I am? Honestly, have you any idea? I'm afraid I don't know, sir. Even though your name's on screen. Wrong! Actually, you do, sort of. I am a part of you, little mortal. I'm a shadow in your subconscious. A blemish on your fragile little psyche. You know me. You just don't know it. Sheagorath, Daedric Prince of Madness, at your service. So does that mean that you'll leave or not? Now that's the real question, isn't it? Because honestly, how much time off could a demented Daedra really need? So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave. That's right, I'm done. Holiday! Complete! Time to return to the humdrum day to day. On one condition. You have to find the way out first. Well, good luck with that. Alright, what's the catch though? Ha! I do love it when the mortals know they're being manipulated. Makes things infinitely more interesting. Dare to take a look around? This is not, I dare say, the Solitude Botanical Gardens. Have any idea where you are? Where you truly are? Welcome to the deceptively verdant mind of the Emperor Pelagius the Third. That's right! You're in the head of a dead, homicidally insane monarch! <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Can I still rely on my swords and spells and sneaking and all that nonsense? Sure. Sure. Or, you could use... The Wabachak! Huh? Huh? Didn't see that coming, did you? Do you mind? I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. Okay, so let's head to the left first. Oh, good choice! 
Well, good for me. I find everyone being out to get you so terribly entertaining. <laughs> you might find it less so. You see, Pelagius's mother was, well, let us say, unique. Although I suppose, in the grand scheme of things, she was fairly average for a septum. That woman wielded fear like a cleaver. Or did she wield a cleaver and make people afraid? I never get that part right. Oh, but she taught her son well. Pelagius learned at a very early age that danger could come from anywhere, at any time, delivered by anyone. The objective here is simple, you simpleton. Use your wabaja to defeat the enemy, or they do the same. Once here, all we need to do is shoot one of the people sitting behind Pelagius. Oh, -ho! I thought they'd never figure it out. With the threat gone, Pelagius is under the delusion that he's safe, which means you picked him out, sir. And we're that much closer to home. Next, we'll run back to the table and take the middle pathway. You have headed down the path of dreams. Unfortunately for you, Pelagius suffered night terrors from a young age. All you need to do is find something to wake our poor Pelagius up. You'll find his terrors easy to repel, but persistent. Here, we need to shoot the sleeping Pelagius, then shoot whatever spawns. Repeat until the objective is complete. Well, now that's something to crow about. With Pelagius up and about, you're moving right along. We'll both be home in no time. Now we'll head back to the table and take the final pathway, which is to the left of where we're coming from, but to the right of where we entered this realm. Ah, now this is a sad path. Pelagius hated and feared many things. Assassins, wild dogs, the undead, pumpernickel. But the deepest, keenest hatred was for himself. The attacks he makes on himself can be seen here fully. They're always carried out on the weakest part of his fragile self. The self-loathing enhances Pelagius's anger. Ah, but his confidence will shrink with every hit. You must bring the two into balance. This one is a bit confusing and all over the place, but we need to make Pelagius' confidence big by shooting it and make his anger small by shooting it. It's a bit messy because they keep teleporting and his self-doubt spawns, but overall it's not too hard. Wonderfully so done. Here we go. finally ready to love himself and continue Ooh. hating everyone else. Then, all we need to do is make our way back to the table and to Sheogorath. I have a saying. I'm not going to feel what you have to like. Or something like that. Pelagius Septum III, once the mad emperor of Tamriel, now so boringly sane. I always knew he had it in him. Well, I suppose it's back to the Shivering Isles. The trouble Haskell can get into while well, I'm gone simply boggles the mind. Let's make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Clothes, check. Beard, check. Luggage. Luggage. Now where did I leave my luggage? Master, you've taken me back. Does this mean we're going home? Oh, happy times. I can't wait to... Yes, yes, that's quite enough celebration. Let's send you ahead, shall we? As for you, a little mortal minion, feel free to keep the Waba Jack as a symbol of my... I'll just take the damn thing. You take care of yourself now. And if you ever find yourself up in New Sheo, do look me up. We can share a strawberry tart. Ha <laughs> ha! Ta-ta! All right, thanks buddy. Let's check out the Wabajack before he changes his mind and turns us into a pile of cheese. The Wabajack. It's got a base damage of 27, which doesn't really apply. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's got a weight of 10, a value of 1,565, and it's enchantment. A blast from Wabajack with an unpredictable effect. Now before we get into the staff's mechanics and intricacies, let's quickly touch on its physical appearance. The head of the Wabajack resembles three of Sheogorath's faces in the differing moods that the Daedric Lord tends to alternate between arbitrarily, because he's a madman. 
It also resembles the faces of the strange door in Nibbin Bay found in the Shivering Isles DLC in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. That door was also modelled off of Shiogorath's face, and which of course was the gateway to his realm, the Shivering Isles. Now the Wabajak is one of five Daedric artifacts belonging to Sheogorath, the Daedric Prince of Madness. Its unstable nature is a reflection upon Sheogorath's own chaos, helping or hindering those he encounters, or who wield this staff, the Wabajak. As we mentioned a minute ago, the staff has an innate damage stat on it. However, it cannot be utilized as the staff cannot be used as a melee weapon. It's certainly a mysterious item that seems to cast random spells ranging in effect from the complete disintegration to the transformation or even empowerment of the target. These abilities are able to completely alter the course of a battle in one of any number of ways. In good ways, in bad ways, and overall in weird ways. Here is a full list of known effects of the Wabajack and of course be sure to let me know in the comments if you've experienced any effects other than the ones I'm about to list. So the known effects of the Wabajack are as follows. Fireball, Thunderbolt, Frost Rune, Unrelenting Force Effect, the throwback effect of the Shout, Heal Other, Disintegration, Transformation, Can Summon a Mud Crab, a Daedra, a Rabbit, a Chicken, a Chicken that Explodes after 20 seconds, It Can Transform Your Foes into a Chicken, a Rabbit, a Dramora Lord, a Random Draga, Goats, Spectral Ghosts, it can also completely destroy your enemy by transforming them into a sweet roll, a fountain of septums, or a random book. It can also turn them into level Dramora, it can turn them invisible, summon enemy Dramora, it can do an ice spike, it can instantly kill the enemy, leaving them as a ghostly remains. It can fear, drain stamina, paralyze, unequip the target's armor, absorb health, Targets can explode, turning into ghostly remains and scattered gold and pitchforks. It can change the target's armor, it can decapitate the enemy, it can reanimate target's dead bodies. It can have no effect whatsoever. When using it, you may switch places with the target, it may replace the enemy with random amounts of kinds of cheese, or it may teleport the enemy a short distance away. Now I personally have not experienced the cheese transformation, the unrelenting force effect, the decapitation effect, the pitchfork effect, or the random book spawning effect. And I did use this star for a good three hours straight getting footage for this video. So I have thoroughly tested this damn thing. So I feel like some of the things in that list I just mentioned need to be proved before you take them as confirmed effects. But for the most part, as you'll see throughout this video, most of those things do actually happen. And with that said, I did experience two WTF moments while using this stuff that had effects that were not listed. Firstly, this enemy suddenly took flight and was floating around shooting me with arrows. He gained this Super Saiyan power only after being transformed into a mud crab and then turning back. I'm sure it's just a bug, but one I've never seen before at any point in Skyrim ever. Secondly, and most alarmingly, I used the Wabajack, my game paused for a second, then my character had changed sex, it had changed race, and it was wearing different armor. I was using a female Ultima clad in Jester's clothes for this video, then suddenly I was playing a male Nord with iron armor. And he also had an ancient Nordic sword attached to his waist, but it wasn't equipped in either hand. Again, I'm sure it's just a bug, but also again, one I've never seen before, and one I would not mind never experiencing again. Now, let's talk about this seemingly endless facts, tidbits, and mechanics of the Wabberjack. Okay, all attacks made using the Wabajack are classed under the Destruction School. So fortifying your Destruction Skill to 100% will make the charge cost zero and allow infinite uses, meaning you'll never have to recharge the staff. Also, the Fire, Frost, and Lightning effects are not classed under their respective Destruction subclasses. So, for example, if the Wabajack casts a Frost Rune, an enemy with a 100% frost resistance will still take full damage of that wabberjacked frost rune. Same goes for fire and lightning. This is super useful because nothing can resist the offensive effects of the wabberjack. 
This also makes the Wabberjack a particularly valuable item for anyone on higher difficulty levels, as its damage is not affected by your difficulty setting. Also, it should be noted that when the Wabberjack is used on dragons, essential NPCs, giants, or dead thralls, it will exclusively cause elemental damage, meaning you won't be able to get those instant kills. Also, Mirak and Karstag have immunity to the instant kill effects of the Wabberjack, so don't even try turning the first Dragonborn into a pile of sweet rolls or coins, cause it won't work. And there's plenty more dot points to come on the Wabberjack. If the effect that transforms the target into a Mudcrab is cast on a Mudcrab, it will grow larger. It also seems to very regularly change Mudcrabs into chickens. For some reason, it also has a higher chance of instantly killing or turning Dwarven Centurions into sweet rolls. Now, if the Wabberjack is used to turn a victim in the abandoned shack into an animal, it will count as killing them, even before the effect wears off. When the effect does wear off, the victim will be dead. Just in general, when an enemy is transformed into an animal, it will be temporary. But if they are transformed into a food item such as a sweet roll, it will be permanent. And more often than not, instead of transforming an enemy into an animal, it will instead spawn that animal next to the enemy, and these spawned animals seem to hold the enemy's aggro for the duration of their existence. This is actually really useful because it gives you a break from the fight, or you can stand back and do your thing while the enemy fights this freshly spawned mud crab. Also, if a target dies while it is transformed as an animal, the animal that they were transformed into may be spawned upon their death. Now if a spawned Dramora Lord fades while being decapitated, it may remain alive without a head. And very, very rarely, targets transformed by the Wabberjack may never turn back. If this happens, they also cannot be damaged, so they are essentially permanently transformed into an immortal rabbit, chicken, or mud crab. Now when an enemy is turned into an item such as a sweet roll, sometimes it cannot be picked up. And for some reason, if the target is turned into a burst of septums, it will count as stealing if you try to pick them up. When the Wabberjack is used on a man sitting in a cart, it will also transform the cart. Be wary, as sometimes when using the Wabberjack on a wild animal, the game will start running slowly, like me in a marathon. And again, sometimes when the Wabberjack is given to followers, it glitches in the follower's hand and disappears while they unsheath it. And the bad news is when opening the follower's inventory, there will be no Wabberjack. It's lost, so don't give it to your followers. But even if you steer clear of giving it to your followers, some more bad news. Sometimes the Wabberjack simply disappears randomly from your inventory. Whether this is a bug or if it's Sheogorath being a cheeky chump, who knows? And just to show how solid the scripting is, attacking a summoned Dramora Lord with the Wabberjack may cause the game to crash. Hey, that's fun! Now using the Wabberjack on plot-related NPCs can produce highly unpredictable results, as their scripts may interact with the Wabberjack's effects in ways that cannot be anticipated, so be sure not to do that. Now if you like to live on the edge, and you do give your follower the Wabberjack, and it does end up working. When they use it, the only effects that will happen are the damage dealing attacks, not any of these random crazy Sheogorathish effects. Also, more disappearing Wabberjack, when it is placed on a weapon display or weapon rack, of course, like most items, it has a pretty good chance of vanishing. So steer clear of those old weapon racks. Now, the majority of the Wabberjack's effects are considered harmful thus making it a crime to use it against friendly NPCs. Also, you may get some new friends, as once you have acquired the Wabberjack, a Sheogorath worshipper called the Mad Woman may randomly run up to you and ask you to Wabberjack her. She wants to be blasted by my staff, that sounds like Friday night. Based on the Wabberjack book in-game, it seems the staff has a detrimental effect on users, making them obsessive and outright insane. Of course, this keeps with the theme of the staff's creator and implies an explanation of how Sheogorath looks if the hero of Kavach is really who the character meets in the Mind of Madness. Now, the name of his staff, the Wabberjack, is most probably an allusion to the Lewis Carroll poem called the Jabberwocky. Wabberjack, Jabberwocky, yeah, it's pretty similar. So overall, what's going on with this thing? The Wabberjack is an easy weapon to earn and a very powerful staff. It is a long range weapon, which makes it quite useful for fighting foes while standing a long way away. You just need some damn good aim. I mean, obviously it's super handy. 
being able to suppress an enemy by turning them into an animal, blast them with a powerful offensive destruction spell like Fireball, or instant kill them with a stop to their heart, or being metamorphed entirely into a sweet roll or a fistful of coins. It's a damn good weapon, and in most cases will completely nullify your enemy, maybe not straight away, but before it does, it will confuse them, then nullify them. Also, if you fortify your destruction skill by 100%, it will have infinite charges as we discussed earlier on in the video. So I mean, yeah, the Wabajack is chaotically powerful, so enjoy it while it lasts. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel, and this has been my guide for the unique staff of the Prince of Madness Sheogorath, the Wabajack. I do hope this video helped you out, and if it did, you will be very interested in checking out the other Skyrim Special Edition guides that I've already done. Links to them can be found down in the description. Now down there in the old description, you can find links to my social medias, including Twitter and Patreon. Be sure to hit them up with a follow or a like if you are keen in supporting the channel and keeping up to date with what I'm up to. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos for you, so your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So thank you very much for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.